People are scared of electric cars. Most of us have heard of FUD by now, which means fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And this is what causes people to put off the adoption of EVs. But most don't make it past the fear part. Also, if someone says they have a brilliant new idea, the first thing that the person with the old idea will do is try to promote fear for the new idea. This is happening with EVs now. People fear electric cars for hundreds of reasons, but the big ones are fires, battery malfunction, charging infrastructure, not range anxiety, and cold weather performance. If I missed a big one, please let me know in the comments and stay tuned till the end. There's a quiz. Seriously though, there's a quiz. Hey, smash the like button. Thank you. Before we get into it, my name is Adam. I have a solar array in my side yard. I love electric cars and I wanna help you get better at both. Subscribe if that sounds like something you're into. First, let's look at fires. Hybrid vehicles, 3,474 fires per 100,000 sales. Gas vehicles, 1,529 fires per 100,000 sales. Electric vehicles, 25 fires per 100,000 sales. So, if we are talking about hybrid vehicles, looks like, yes, fires are more likely to happen. However, even with the Bolt Scare, there are thousands of videos on the Bolt Scare. Feel free to look one up. Basically, all the bolts were recalled because there was a manufacturer defect making them prone to catch fire under certain conditions. EVs aren't as likely to catch fire as often as a gas car. Remember, gas cars take flammable liquid, store it in one part of the vehicle, then pump it to another part of the vehicle through a little hose and set that liquid on fire thousands of times per second through a series of thousands of moving metal parts with moderate to high friction. These parts are in some cases lubricated with other flammable liquids. All of this is at very high temperature. Electric cars take batteries and use them to make motors turn. The batteries are made of an electrolyte that can catch fire when the battery is punctured, heavily damaged, or heated to extreme temperatures. There are also high temperatures involved here, but not as high. Hybrid cars have both of these systems right beside each other. I'm not a scientist and I'm not going to pretend to be, so that's all the explaining I'll do. A good gas car, good gas car, is unlikely to catch fire if well-maintained, but it could catch fire for thousands of reasons, whether in an accident or not. But millions of EVs go billions of miles without any intentional fires at all. Remember, gas car, intentional fire, in the combustion chamber of the engine. EVs also have another protection against fire called a pyro fuse. This fuse will blow if the car is able to identify a fire or safety risk, most likely an accident. Okay, so, fire. Some electric cars out there do not have a great track record. Six out of ten examples of the Porsche Taycan have a battery problem that could cause a fire when charging at level one due to cheap parts used for its AC charger. This took a whistleblower to identify. The Chevy Bolt had batteries manufactured by LG recalled, eventually. So did the Hyundai Kona EV, the same batteries, in fact. Hyundai made the recall immediately. Chevy waited till the last minute, which meant all the bolts, 170,000 in total, had to be recalled. Lightning, lightning, lightning! But there's an elephant in the room, and you haven't subscribed. Take a second, ring the bell. Thank you very much. Where was I? Oh yeah, elephants. What I have been able to gather from the information I've looked at sources in the description, is that Tesla cars catch fire just like all other cars, and those fires can be hard to put out because of the technology of lithium-ion batteries, just like all other EVs, but there's no red herring or curveball, or since I'm a West Virginia resident, canary in the coal mine out there to suggest that Teslas catch fire for no reason. And the proof, as they say, is in the pudding, or in this case, on the road. This is not the pudding of an honest woman. Two million or so at the time I'm recording this video. That's not a ton when it comes to automobiles, but it's a lot. That's more than all the Porsche 911s and all the Miatas ever, for example. And they have been around for a long time. So, fires. They are a thing. When they do happen to EVs, they can be harder to put out. Could that be because they are being put out using the incorrect methods? Well... To ask a question immediately and answer it myself, Tucker Carlson. What exactly is this disinformation? Yes, but they do not happen as often, says the governing bodies that decide how safe every car is. The next concern is battery malfunction. There is this Rich Rebuilds video with this guy that was going to have to pay $16,000 for a new battery. There was a reason for that, though. I never had the comprehensive coverage on the car.
There's this guy, Surf Tesla. I hit the rock. A tire battery was replaced with a new, new battery, and that was covered by the insurance. And There's this misleading thumbnail that has nothing to do with battery repair. And there are other stories in forums and videos about battery replacement online. Battery replacement is expensive. For a Tesla, it can be sixteen to $22,000. And that sounds scary. But there's a thing. It's called insurance. There's another thing. It's called a warranty. The Rich Rebuilds guy was going to have to pay out of pocket because he didn't insure his car. I never had the comprehensive coverage on the car. Is that his fault? Tucker says yes, but he actually didn't pay $16,000. He paid less than $1,000. Hoovy paid a similar amount. Also, his car was bought intentionally as a non-working vehicle and was repaired online on a video for clicks. Remember that. Surf Tesla guy paid just his deductible and... Everything was covered by the insurance, but... How did they get off with such cheap fixes? Because there is a Tesla community out there. Two million folks have one, and they are fighting to figure out a way to keep them on the road for cheap. So yes, battery swaps have been done, with bills in the tens of thousands, but insurance covered them. And why won't they just fix the problems with the packs? Why do they insist that the customer have the entire pack replaced? Safety. Right here, I'd like to note that I support Right to Repair, and this gives independent companies a unique opportunity to provide a much-needed service in battery repair. Insurance companies and Tesla are doing the safest thing for you. A fresh start. The battery pack goes to the manufacturer, which is actually the company with the logo on the car. Ask a Ford mechanic about who made the transmission on their Mustang. The answer isn't Ford, and they will find a safe way to reuse it. So, do batteries malfunction? Yes, but they are a structural part of the car that your insurance will cover in the event of an accident and the manufacturer will cover in the event of a malfunction during the warranty period. Eight years. Eight years. Once again, that's eight years. Do you keep your cars for eight years? Let me know in the comments. Charging a car can be challenging. There's no way around that one. If you don't plan, you could end up stranded. Also, if you buy the wrong car, you could end up stranded. And, of course, the leading car manufacturers on Earth want you to be afraid of becoming stranded. They make the cars that have the fueling stations every two-tenths of a mile in every direction on Earth. GM is going to release 20-some EV models by 2020-something. This one that's pretty, and this one that's tough, and this one that's pretty tough. And this one that hopefully has good batteries this time. You electrified the entire automobile industry. I'm serious. You led. And it matters. But none of that matters. Because there's nowhere to charge, right? I mean, right? Of course, right? Wrong. There needs to be a charger every 0.2 miles, just like the gas stations. Or your car that's going to die is going to get cold and going to die. Wrong. There is just one number that you need to remember when you have an EV, 80%. Because that's how much charge you're going to have in the morning. Every day, every trip, every time. For a regular EV, that's 180 to 250 miles. Every day, every time you get in. You work in the next town. It's a pretty long drive, like 60 miles. It takes 70 minutes to get there. But today there was road work and you had to sit for an additional hour. It used 8% of your battery. This literally happened to you on the worst day. Today it was 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 38 C, and you had the AC set to 68. Your car was blowing full blast while you sat beside an asphalt truck for 40 minutes on I-95. Worst Thursday ever. You missed a meeting and you're going to have to work this weekend to make up for it. But you're going to make it home from work without having to charge. That's right, in a regular EV with an 80% charge, you won't have to stop for your 120-mile commute. No sketchy roadside service station, no 10x priced convenience food. Maybe you slowed down 10 miles an hour for the interstate the last few miles, or maybe you didn't. You still made it home with battery to spare, and because most EVs have a lot of tech inside, because, well, they're quite literally a computer on wheels, because they have to be, you knew you would make it home. Wasn't pretty, but you made it. And if you have level two at home, you're right as rain tomorrow at seven when you do it all over again. But what about the road trip? What are you going to do on the road trip? I heard you. Loud and clear. First, take a level one with you overnight. That's enough to get you to the nearest charger in the morning. Second, plan your trip. Yep. Even if it's when you're two hours into an unplanned trip with 35% battery left going 90 on I-10 or I-70 or for your folks in the middle, Route 50. Now it's time to plan. Get out your app, navigate to the nearest charger. Spend 20 to 50 minutes filling up and continue on your next leg. Also, don't drive till you hit 1%. That's how you get stranded. Used to doing that in your gas car? 
Time for some new tricks, Monsieur Old Dog. That's just my baby dog. That's just my baby dog. 15 to 80, that's where you live now. It's just your phone, only bigger. And just like your buddy's frayed cord you had to use in a pinch because you've got to have enough candy crush to make it through your sister's volleyball game, you won't let that thing die. You know the consequences. Out of system, it was kept up by Tiffany Clark. Head down for Wisconsin. You also know that not all chargers are created equal. Electrify America will strand you if you don't research. EV Go will strand you without research. Keep enough juice to be able to go to the next one if the one you're at is broken. And call ahead. Not kidding. Call Electrify America and ask if the charger is working. And then stop for dinner or lunch. Planning is fun, huh? Why not plan dinner around a DC fast charge or a level 2 location? Lots of free level 2 out there. State parks, pubs, parking garages, malls, grocery stores, small businesses. And there are many apps designed to help you find them. Oh, and that little foldable useless electric scooter? It was made for the trunk of your EV. Don't ask me how I know. Did you get all that? Then you won't have any problems. Is an EV a gas car? No. No, it's not. But only the arrogant and the untrained will get stranded. Don't like to plan ever because you are arrogant and or untrained? Stick to the explosive juice. Or borrow an ice car from mom or child or even Hertz. Oh, wait, we're planning again. Keep the Sorrento. It's paid for. And then there's cold weather performance. There are documented issues of heat pump failures in cold areas of the world on some Tesla models. An over-the-air update has already been sent to them. And the repairs were covered under warranty. But there was a problem. And yes, battery does lose range in cold weather. I made a video about it. Did a 60-mile commute in cold weather. You can watch it if you'd like. So, long commute, more planning. But if you get stranded in traffic with an EV for 20-some hours in cold weather, camp mode is going to come in handy. There was a Model 3 stuck in that traffic jam. I'm grateful that I was driving my EV when I got stuck on I-95. No, the recent nightmare on Virginia's I-95 would not have been worse if everyone had been driving electric vehicles instead of gas-powered vehicles. In fact, everyone would have had a far better experience if they had been driving an EV. And you'll still have enough range to drive away. Because EVs use 1% per hour. That's the rate I found. Super cold, multiply by two for worst case, 2% per hour. In the cold, half a a gallon gallon per per hour. hour. In an ice car, 10 gallons, 20 hours. 40% charge, 20 hours. So, Ty? I mean, you're going to be super hungry and thirsty and have to poop way before you need to worry about your car. And look up Shane Gandy death if you really need a tiebreaker on being stranded in an EV or a gas car. EVs don't emit poisonous gases as a function of proper operation. There they are, the common fears related to EVs. Was this a deep dive? No, Tucker. No, it was not. More like a coaxing to the edge of the shallow end. My hope is that it got your gears turning. In fact, let's have a quiz. Remember, I told you there'd be a quiz. Just use your keyboard in the comments. Hello, computer. Just use the keyboard. The keyboard. How quaint. How many not-on-fire Teslas are on the road? A. More than all the Miatas. B. More than all the Porsche 911s. C. All of the above. Which car is better to be stranded in? A. An EV. B. A gas car. C. It's kind of a tie. D. Shane Gandy is still dead. E. Both C and D. If you run over a big rock and your battery will need to be replaced, who will pay for it? A. Rich Rebuilds. B. Write that check. C, your insurance company. Or D, the manufacturer if your battery is within the warranty parameters. E, depends on the situation. If you charge your car overnight, how much battery power do you have in the morning? A, 80% or so. B, go to the Sunoco now and I'm going to be late. C, there is no such thing as too much coffee. Or D, yawn. I don't answer questions this early in the morning. And finally, How much do you know about EVs? A. I know enough to know I'll never get one. Exactly the same thing you said about smartphones in 2008. B. Not much, but I know more now that I've watched this video. C. I'm going to roast this dude in the comments. Comment with your answers. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Hey! Smash the like button! Thank you.